Hey y'all, Lawrence here at the Peak Design Safe House. We got plenty of bottled water and canned food. And today, we're gonna talk about microclutch. What is microclutch? Microclutch is a hand strap. It improves your grip on your camera, it gives you more confidence while you're shooting, and it reduces fatigue. And all the while, it gives you incredible access to your camera's controls. And trust me when I say that nothing gives you more security or comfort when you're holding one of these bad boys. And why should you trust me? Well. Number one, I'm Peak Design's creative director, so I've used a whole lot of different cameras. Number two, I have something that doctors call big dumb hands. And number three, I have a master's in fine art. Wow, still impressive, even after all these years. Skip ahead if you wanna to get to the part of this video where we talk about installation and use. Right now, let's talk about who MicroClutch is for. Now, Peak Design didn't invent the hand strap. We just made it better -er. First, we did that with our original clutch strap, which is still available. And now, we've done it with our new micro clutch. So why do we like hand straps here at Peak Design? Well, they give you security and drop protection. That's perfect if you're doing an afternoon of street photography or ripping through nature. Or maybe you're pulling yourself behind a vintage Chevy truck on your skateboard while you're holding a Leica. They reduce hand fatigue too. They let you stretch your fingers out. It's great if you're doing an extended portraiture session or a long day in the studio where you're holding your camera almost nonstop. Hand straps also take up less space than a traditional full length strap. This is great if you're trying to shoot a little more discreetly or you just wanna give your neck and shoulders a rest. All right, so let's quickly talk about the different hand straps that Peak Design makes. We've got our original clutch, seen here on this D800, and then our new micro clutch, which actually comes in two variations. How do you pick the right hand strap? Well, a few rules make it simple for most cameras with just a few exceptions. If you have a DSLR or an SLR, get clutch. If you have a mirrorless camera, get micro clutch. If your mirrorless camera has a pronounced hand grip, get micro clutch with an L plate. And if your mirrorless camera does not have a pronounced hand grip, get micro clutch with the I plate. Here are a few cameras that work awesome with the micro clutch using an L plate. So as you can see here, I've got some mirrorless cameras and they've all got a pretty pronounced hand grip. I've got my personal Canon R5. We've got a Sony a7 IV. I've got a Nikon Z6 II and a Panasonic Lumix GH5 II. If we take a closer look at, say, this R5, you can see that that L plate fits it brilliantly. Now let's take a look at some cameras that work really well with the I plate version of the micro clutch. So I've got in front of me here a Fujifilm X-E4, a Fujifilm X100F, and a Leica Q. Before you ask, no, the X100 is not for sale. And obviously what these cameras have in common is that there's not a pronounced grip. And so that makes them perfect for the eye plate version of the micro clutch. So like any good rule, this one's gonna have some squirrely exceptions. What I've got in front of me here is a Fujifilm X-T4 and a Fujifilm X-T3. And you might say, oh, those are pretty similar. They probably use the same micro clutch. Wrong. It's the combination of a short grip and where the quarter 20 screw is on the bottom of the camera that makes the X-T4 and the newer X-T5 perfect for the L plate, while the X-T3 is better off with an I plate. And if I did have an L plate, I'd have a little bit of overhang right here. Not the end of the world, but you'd be happier with an I plate. Funny enough, the X-T4 and the newer X-T5 do work with an L-plate because Fujifilm moved the quarter 20 screw further back towards the back of the camera. Similarly, we found Sony's A7 series to work really well with the L-plate, except the A7C, which doesn't have enough grip and is better served by the I-plate. You can actually measure at home. If you measure from the center of the quarter 20 screw to the tip of the grip, if it's three centimeters or more, get an L-plate. If it's three centimeters or less, get an eye plate. Exception two, some cameras are too small for micro clutch. An example here would be Sony's RX100. Similarly, point and shoot cameras in general just don't really work for micro clutch, too small. If your camera's too small for micro clutch, but you still want added security, check out Cuff, our wrist strap. Exception three, some bigger mirrorless cameras could work with our micro clutch or our original clutch. Some examples here would be the Leica SL2, Canon R series or the Nikon Z series. Our advice for those cameras in particular, if you're shooting with long lenses or heavy glass, you might be happier with the clutch. For a recap on these rules, exceptions, and for a compatibility chart, check out support.peakdesign.com. Microclutch has three main components. It has a machined aluminum base plate that's anodized. It has an adjustable Hypalon strap, and then attached to the strap is the microfiber hand pad. 
The base plate attaches to the bottom of your camera using a quarter 20 screw, and that's included. It also has a quick release function, which means if you have a battery compartment or a card slot on the bottom of your camera, it's easy to get into them. The base plate has a hidden, removable tool that you can take out, and this allows you to tighten or loosen the screw that's attaching the micro clutch to the camera. That tool doesn't just pop out, it's got magnets keeping it held in. And like all peak design plate screws, we use a tool and not a slot for a coin because the tool gives you way more input torque and keeps this thing attached stronger. And that tool shape that this screw uses is totally unique. And that's because we needed a tool that was flat enough to fit into the stack height of the base plate, but also could give you enough input torque that it would be on there strong. And something like a little coin slot that you see on some other tripod plates from other companies, those don't give you enough input torque and they can kind of slip and scratch up the bottom of your gear. So this is what we made, totally proprietary. A few other details on this micro clutch plate. There's an anchor attachment point, which we'll show you how to use in a minute. There's a channel in here that allows for both adjustability and the use of an included tripod plate. It's also got an integrated axial attachment, and that's how the Hyplon strap attaches to the base plate. You can see that that gives it a bunch of adjustability there, so it can fit the maximum number of camera body styles and hand types. The Hyplon strap has a bunch of different attachment points that let us size this to the camera in the hand. And then attached, of course, is the microfiber hand pad. And that's super soft, the part that actually touches your hand. All right, so what's in the box when you open up micro clutch? Obviously, you've got micro clutch. You're gonna have the included tripod plate, and that gives you Peak Design and Arca tripod compatibility. It also gives you compatibility with Peak Design's capture clip. You've got two attachment screws. The tall one is for use with that tripod plate. The short one is for use without it. We've got an included split ring a silicone cover for your split ring, and an included split ring tool that'll save you some pain and maybe some possible fingernail breakage by using that. And of course, also included is the tool for loosening and tightening the screw. Let's talk installation. First, I'm gonna show you how to install it without the tripod plate. So I'm gonna take that long screw and the tripod plate and set that aside. I'm also gonna take the tool out and just have it ready not inside the base plate. All right, step one, take our screw, this is the shorter one, and just thread it a few times into your quarter 20 slot. Next, I'm gonna take my plate, and I'm gonna go to this wide opening, and put that over the screw, and then I'm gonna slide the plate until it's in the position that I'd like it to be in. Then I'm gonna use one hand and hold the plate in place, and the other hand I'm gonna take the tool and tighten my screw. After the screw's tightened, I can reinsert the tool back into the hidden compartment. Now something you'll notice on the base plate is two tiny tick marks down here towards the end. This screw needs to be on this side towards the grip of those tick marks to give you the appropriate amount of grip. All right, now we're gonna put the split ring on. If your camera has a slot instead of an eyelet for strap attachment, a lot of Canons have that. I know the Fujifilm X-C4 has that. You can skip this and meet us in a few steps. All right, so take your split ring attachment tool and feed the split ring into it and give it a little turn. And what you'll do is it'll open up that split ring and you're not having to stick your fingernail in there, which is great. They think of everything. All right, now I'll feed the split ring through, start it, remove the tool, spin it around, and it's on. Then you put the split ring cover on top of the split ring and that keeps the strap in place and it keeps this thing from making noise or scratching any part of the camera up. Start by feeding the cover through one corner of the split ring and then stretch it over to a second corner. All right, now feed the end of the Hypalon band through the split ring and you're gonna need to pull back the split ring cover a little bit to feed it through. It's a little tough, but it's worth it because it keeps everything in place. And what's nice is that it creates some pressure. All right, so to determine how far down to crank this thing and which of these little eyelets to put on the stud, I get a good grip, I pull it snug, I make sure my index finger can reach the shutter, and then I just remember what number is lined up with the stud. There's little numbers laser etched by each of these holes, and they help you to remember. So then you just feed the eyelet right over the stud. And if there's a tail, you can take that and tuck it into the hand pad. So I've got a comfortable grip, I got two fingers, total access to the shutter button and controls. What I found, I've got pretty big hands. 
I usually have two fingers and on some small cameras, just one finger going through the micro clutch. Some coworkers with smaller hands, I've noticed, will have two fingers or maybe three fingers going through a grip. And so that just depends on how big your hand is and what size the camera is. Now let's say you did this installation and you can't get it tight enough still, or conversely, that you can't get it loose enough still. Watch this. So undo a little bit of what we did. Take the tail out and undo the stud. From this point, as we've uninstalled a little bit, you can actually adjust this attachment point and make it a little tighter if you need it tighter or looser if you need it looser. So I adjusted the sizing here by taking the Hypalon strap off of the stud and moving it from number eight to number seven. From here, finish the installation using the steps from earlier. All right, so let's say you need to get to the bottom of your camera, change the battery or access a card slot. First, release the hidden tool. Press down at the indent and then pull up from the other side. Then loosen the screw by just about one full turn. From here, slide out the plate. You can easily access any compartments on the bottom of the camera, conduct your business, and then reinstall. The magnets grab the tool and hold it firmly in place. Now let's say you wanna use the tripod plate. Again, get your tool out, and this time remove the screw totally. And the plate. Grab the included long screw and thread that in to the quarter 20 attachment a couple of times. Take your tripod plate and place it on top of the base plate. What you'll feel is a set of powerful magnets that keep the tripod plate and the base plate properly aligned for installation. Feed both plates over the screw and tighten. And put your tool back into the plate. With the plate on, you can now use any Peak Design tripod or capture clip. It also works with other Arca Swiss tripod heads. Now, if you need to swap the battery out or get to the bottom of the camera with the tripod plate on, follow these instructions. First, get your tool out. Loosen the screw by about a full turn. Pull your plates and you have access to the bottom of the camera. When you're done, realign, push your bottom plate into place, hold it and tighten the screw. All right, and let's say you wanna use a Peak Design strap with your micro clutch, easy. First, I'll thread an anchor through the opposite side of my camera. On this Canon, I don't need a split ring. And then on the bottom, on my micro clutch plate, you'll see this little indentation here, and that is an anchor attachment point. Feed your anchor through, voila, anchor attachment point. Sometimes it's easier to actually disengage the plate, but I'm too proud. Then attach your camera strap and you've got micro clutch and a full length strap. Or as my dad would say, belts and suspenders. <laughs> got it. Micro clutch is a great little hand strap. Immediately after installing, you're gonna have more comfort, security, and confidence when you're out there shooting. I think it's a great thing for any mirrorless shooter to have in their kit. If you've got any questions, reach out to our customer service department at info at peakdesign.com. Success.